Hi, Hydraxit here and welcome to the next part of the Tenogen Pipeline tutorial and this episode we are going to be looking at how to low poly your finished high poly sculpt. So you see on screen right now I have my Gara project I'm currently working on, it's not completely done yet, but I'm going to show you how to do kind of multi-part uh, low poly objects. So today I'm going to be focusing on the head part which is kind of the, the helmet and then the head piece. You see on the right I am going through my sub tools to make sure they're all good. Now when I do this kind of stuff the first thing that I actually do is I save a copy of the project and call it the same name but exploded. So I'll always have the combined version and the exploded version differently and you'll see why in a minute. Because when we're baking parts, which means that when we're getting the detail and put on the low polys, we actually need to do it in a kind of exploded format. So it's kind of a very easy little thing to do. I'm just kind of lining up here to showcase how it is. And all I really do is I just take each part, I put on the move mode at the top, and I move them directly above the previous part. I always keep the head at the base of where the neck is and I move every part above it to make sure there's a good space in between because then we get to make sure that there's even texture baking and no part besides it or adjacent to it will it make the textures go from that piece onto the piece underneath. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm just putting all the things directly above and it also affects how we import our objects into our references for making our low polys and down the line for our UVs too. So it all has kind of a, keeps the space in between and then once we have our UVs, then we put all the low poly objects back together as well. And we have an exploded version too. So we always kind of go between the exploded and the merge at the very end. So what I'm doing here is now, there's a bit, there's a plugin right here called the FBX export import. And what you do is for your high poly, you export all the ones, all the parts that is, of the helmet exploded. Because we're going to use that as the reference for later for baking, which will be episode five. Um, but you always want to keep the exploded version of the helmet ready just in case. Now there are ways to do it um, non-exploded but they're a little bit technical but for the kind of beginning just make sure they're always exploded. Save the parts exploded as an FBX and then what we want to do is go through each of these parts individually and export them as an OBJ which means that we can use them as a reference model to start making our low poly version. So it takes a little bit of the time to export, obviously, if there's a high detail. If your computer is bad like mine, which it kind of is, um, even a 1.5 million or 2.7 million polygon face takes a, about a few seconds to export. But for computers who are a little bit more, uh, you know, um, older or not the best kind of uh, processors, there are ways to make things a lot easier down the line, which we'll be showing you how to do it. And it's basically how we make each part of these a lower poly version of it in ZBrush. We export those ones as our references, but since we have our high poly exploded version at the very start, we always have the data ready for us. So, what I'm happy to now, obviously we're just waiting, and uh, when the next part is done, I will tell you what we're kind of doing. So, now what I'm doing is I'm going to my geometry subtool section on the right hand side and I'm going to the Z remesher function. I'm just looking at the current one in view which is my helmet, it's the selected subtool. And the Z remesh function allows you to kind of bring down the polygon count by a massive amount but still keep the overall shape of the actual model. So basically I turned off the half in the same, I've wanted a target polygon count and for me I'm hoping roughly around 80,000 faces should be enough because my computer can definitely handle that. And the Z remesher is basically going to go through all this and turn it into a low poly model. Now the thing that you know here is that since there's a lot of grooves and line work, we don't preserve those at all. We just need the faces for when we're doing our low poly and the Z remesher kind of tries to keep that uh, in respect. But things that are kind of like 90 degrees cut, it will still try to preserve it providing that there's a face and the actual face count available for that model. So you see here, once you do your actual Z remesh, the model, the high detail becomes a low poly, all the poly paint is removed as well, um, which is kind of a pain, but sometimes it's okay because down the line, your high poly is used from your high poly exploded version that we've made of our FBX, so it doesn't really matter the low poly poly paint at all. So you see here, down to 40,000 faces, but the detail is similar enough, and basically what you want to do now is go up to your Z plugin. I go to 3D Print Exporter, but you can also do the export on the top right by your subtools. I go to my selected uh, subtool at the moment, I want an OBJ. I go to a folder and um, I make a new one called low poly because it's very handy to keep everything organized between your high poly and low poly. I go into the low poly and I basically just give it a name for the time being because it's only a reference. Down the line when I make the actual proper low poly in Topogun, then I give the proper name that I'll be used. 
but for the time being I just give them all a different uh, name and I go through each now of the different sub tools that I want and Z remesh them down, make them all ready for the next part. Um, I'm not doing the glass parts at the moment because they're not the way I want it because there's a lot of merged and unseen parts I can get rid of. But for this purpose of this tutorial, I'm only be going to do the head piece and the actual helmet. So we'll wait for this thing to go for magic and then we'll see you on the other side uh, once it's done. So now what I'm doing right here is basically I'm making sure all the Z remeshed parts are available and I'm undoing all the Z remeshing. So I have got the original high poly exploded model. So when I save this, it'll overwrite the previous version. So I'll never have lost that detail right there. So it's just kind of an in-between. I want to make sure that I always have a, a Z brush project with the exploded high detail and a Z brush project with the original unexploded high detail. The Z remesh parts are something that will be done. We don't need to preserve that version of the project as well, but it's good to have the two versions because we'll see that much later in the actual version of episode 5 where we talk about Substance Painter. So, once you've saved that and overwrite it, basically the next part to do is since we have exported our OBJs of the Z remeshed parts for our references, we go to Top Gun. Now there's two ways you can do this, you can either go to Blender, which is a free program and do the UVs there. I hate the interface personally, I know in 2.8 they're actually going a new version. I don't like it, so I use Topo Gun, which is $100, but it makes low polying so much easier, and basically because it gives you not a lot of commands. All you need to do in the top left, they have to load the scene if you have an existing save file, load your reference model, which is the ones that we just exported from the actual ZBrush, and simple things like how to change the view, make new points, new vertices, and how to judge them to make faces. And that's basically all it does. There's a lot of functions on the right hand side, and the tool options we don't really use. All you do is need to use your create vertex point and your bridge thing, make sure your symmetry is on, and it's a very easy process to go through the model. And that's what we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna click load reference. I'm gonna find the folder that all I exported my low poly Z remeshed parts into. And if you use a good naming convention like me, you'll be able to find it very easily. I'm gonna take in now the actual first piece, which is the actual helmet. So I have it here as Gara head low. Once I open it, you'll see that we have the reference model in here which is exactly the same as we had before. And all we need to do is really set up our symmetry options. So it saves you a lot more time. If your part is asymmetric, you obviously do not put this on. But if it is symmetric, you have to make sure that you're gonna do it on mirrored on both sides, so you don't have to do it manually. Now there are ways you can do only half and then mirror it later in like Maya or something. But if I go to my symmetry on the bottom right hand side, my options, I turn on local YZ, you see that there's now a spline in the middle, which means everything is going to be mirrored. And then basically I click done and I click symmetry, which is the option to the left, to turn it on. So everything I do now will be perfectly mirrored when I place a point or when I make a face, it'll be mirrored onto the other side, which saves you a lot more time. So the simple create tool on the left hand side is how you start making your vertices. I always tend to start with the large space in the front in the middle. And if you see here, there's a lot of smooth shapes that we're trying to follow. When you make these new faces, you want to follow the shapes of the actual helmet. There's no point doing all these weird shapes. You see you've got lovely topology here and you basically want to follow it as big as possible. Now, even spaces and even sizes are much better. A lot of these little small details that I'm showing over here, like there would be cuts and stuff, we don't need to put a face to uh, kind of 
keep that cut intact because it will be baked on as a texture later. We're only going to be looking at the large faces and the large shapes to see what they are but also if we have cuts that are integral to the actual shape of the helmet, you can then preserve those with some more extra faces. So if there's a part here like on the side of this little mouthpiece I have, that is a very nice clean line, I might want to keep that so I will actually make it its own unique face. I will not just merge it into the cheek as one soft curve. So all you need to do with the simple create tool added on is start clicking and start making the actual dots. These are your vertices and basically if you follow the lines of the shapes, and once you start doing multiple different ones, you can start seeing that you can start mapping out the topology and the load topology here. I always believe in just start with one row first and make sure it's nice and neat. Try to keep the dots semi-parallel to each other unless they're obviously in uh, larger faces. And once you click on the bridge tool, or if you hold control and select a, dot, a vertex, it goes red, and you can just go through each one and make your faces. And it's just kind of rinse and repeat. So either you can use the actual create tool and use your control and click through each point, or you can use the bridge tool, which will try to do them manually. Sometimes it doesn't work. So I like to just use the control. Sometimes it's a lot easier in your flow and you can kind of knock out a helmet very, very quickly. And you see here how they're semi nice, even faces and following the curve of the actual um, front piece. And that will then make my topology later when I have my fully made kind of low poly object lot more softer and smoother for these kind of curved faces. You wouldn't want to do this in two large faces unless it is like hard surfacing, very large flat faces, then you're okay. But soft, soft kind of curves, you want to have enough curves so that when we kind of bring it into the low poly, the curve will be soft as well. Um, so here we go into the second row and it's similar before, I'm just going to my simple create tool and I'm just marking out the next row of vertices that will be making my faces. I go to my bridge tool and then suddenly, as you can see, the next row is done. Now there are things to know about when you're doing your low poly. There are certain things that are kind of uh, technically very uh, uh, mandatory for you to do. Your final object cannot have more than 5,000 faces. And it's not 5,000 faces per part of the actual helmet, it's 5,000 faces in total for the helmet. So if you have four parts, the four parts total can only have 5,000 faces, not uh, you know 20,000, it has to be 5,000. So there's little things like that and there are the technical details that will make it um, in or not. Obviously, if you're doing a Cyan Dana, it's 7,500. Certain weapon skins are less because they're double. They're like two and a half or something. Um, and I've sped this up a little bit here to kind of show you how quick you can do it. I got the entire helmet done, I think, in about 30 minutes or 40 minutes. Um, but once you kind of get used to it, it's not that hard. It's just obviously if you have nice, even face, nice, even shapes, it makes a lot easier to actually do it. Um, and uh, yeah, so one thing to know is you see here that I'm always following lines. I'm always following lines, always following shapes. I want it to be, you know, to mirror perfectly because um, if you start just uh, making large congealed blobs, it doesn't really uh, work. I always save my progress as well because it does crash my computer every so often. And it's the same thing with a ZBrush or any other pro program. Save often means you're going to be safer in the long term. So we're just going to leave this run in the background, this uh, kind of sped up mode, and you'll eventually see what it looks like when it's fully done, and we'll talk about that then. So you see here that I'm kind of looking at a point, there's a kind of a difference between a uh, rectangle and triangle. You should use as many rectangles as possible. You cannot use any more than four um, sided points because they're called n-gons and the render in actually the Warframe engine does not support n-gons. You can only use triangles or rectangles. Look as I turn the finished model, you see that there's kind of a separation of smaller things for more detail and larger faces. Obviously if things are not being seen at all, you can give them large faces because they're not going to be really important, but you want to kind of see it nice, large, smooth things. And at this version, when I just turn off the view of the net and view the reference, I have just the mesh being shown. You'll see that it kind of actually does resemble the original poly um, of the helmet. Now, things to know, um, triangles are allowed. Try and limit as much as possible. Sometimes you have to have a triangle. Triangles only really affect a model if it's, um, if they move. So if you have moving parts, like kind of like infested tendrils, obviously if you have nice, even cylindrical parts, um, 
it moves easier. Triangles will cause a bit of skewing, a bit of stretching, so try not to do the moving parts. If you use the save option in Topo Gun, instead of saving as a kind of a scene type, which is a TGS file, the drop down can be changed and actually you can save it as an OBJ, which is what we want for the actual low poly models. So instead of just saving the actual um, scene file in Topo Gun, you can just save it as an OBJ instead. And that's what we use when we go into Maya and do our UVs. Now, basically, if you clear the scene, it clears the reference. You can go and load your next reference, which I'm going to do for my headpiece. And the same thing as before, we start off with kind of our, our middle line, start mapping out the points and start following the shape and creating our faces. Um, if you have these Z remeshed parts, it's a lot smoother and does not lag as much. And like my computer will not crash. So um, with these kind of things you see with this shape, it's a lot easier because it's a, it's a very nice long plane. So I know that it's probably going to be maybe four squares across and it's going to be very smooth doesn't really need to have lots of detail except for different like uh, metal parts on the top um, another thing to actually see is like you see when the model is done on the top left hand side we can always see uh, details about the vertices and edges and faces but underneath the actual model on the little gray bar at the bottom it tells you how many triangles it is which I have 801 faces but 1500 triangles so already with just this piece alone that leaves me with a budget of 3,500 triangles for the rest of the helmet. And you're always keeping that in mind because if you keep these TGS files, and you can go back to it, similar with your uh, Blender files, is that you can change things once you go to the UV stage because things do pop up and they're very, very apparent um, when you have like end guns or missing faces or when you have the actual faces interjecting inside the model, these kind of uh, manifold uh, problems. Um, but what I do after this is basically I go to Maya, I load them in and we start there, but that's going to be the next episode, um, which will be also the later this week because I have everything made. I just need to do my audio. Um, so to summarize, the first thing you need to do in your ZBrush once you have your high poly done is to explode the model, save that as a separate file. If your computer is a lower end, you'll have some problems down the line. Z remesh every single part and then export those individual parts as an OBJ, which you can get from the Z plugin, the 3D Print Hub, or in the top right-hand corner, you can export the thing itself as just an OBJ. Once you load those in, you want to actually kind of go through each face, turn on your symmetry, load your reference model, make sure that's the local YZ mode in Topo Gun, and Blender, I think it does it automatically, I'm not that familiar with it. Large, nice, even faces, try to minimize the amount of triangles, we want to maximize the amount of rectangles. You can only have 5,000 faces, for a helmet, 7,500 triangles for a signed Anna. And that's all we're gonna do for uh, today. I hope this helped a lot easier. I'll always be able to help you with more questions. And uh, I'll see you next time when we talk about UVs and uh, making the stuff ready for your textures.